For my Lagertha shirt, I bought genuine linen in a dusty blue colour. I also drafted a pattern with fabrics and then digitised it. I printed out the patterns and can now pin it to the material. The material is actually folded over with the fold nearest the camera. Then I cut out these sections. And when I cut out the back, I make sure not to cut down the fold. After that, I pin on the smaller pieces and cut them out also. You can see part B, the bottom of the front part. I've put that on the fold as well. So the first step of joining this all together is to take the two top parts and iron along the seam in the middle. These two pieces won't be sewed together at all, but they will be joined together with some hook and eyes. So I'm going to leave them open for now. To stop these two parts moving about, I use some clips to hold them together. I then take part B, which is the bottom part of the front. I flip it upwards and I pin that on to both of these. I also put some extra pins just where the two parts of the top meet as I really don't want these parts to have any gape. So now I can sew these all together. I use a straight stitch and I use a little magnetic guide so that my seam allowance is consistent. I left a bigger seam allowance because obviously the raw edges of the linen will fray really easily. And then so when I've finished the stitch, I go back, set the machine to a zigzag stitch and then go just inside that seam. Adding a zigzag stitch in will just stop any fraying at the ends. Now you can just cut off any excess. So now just take an iron and press it over the seam. Now to connect the whole of the front to the back part, I take some pins and pin them where they should join, with the wrong sides facing out. I also pin the shoulders as obviously we'll need to sew these too. I start with the shoulders and I do a straight stitch. Once I've done both shoulders, I then go back and add my zigzag stitch to stop any freeing. I now close the sides by running a straight stitch down. I continue this row of stitching, but I leave a large split at the bottom, so the shirt fits and moves better around the hips. Again, I add a zigzag stitch to stop any freeing. I've got two facings for the front and one circular one for the back. Before I sew the back facing to the front facings, I pin the whole thing to the top. The reason I'm doing that is because I want the facing to have the exact same seam at the shoulders. I want to make sure that they line up exactly. So I adjusted the shoulders after pinning and then now I can sew it in the correct place. I run a straight stitch through, then to finish off the edges I use a zigzag stitch and cut off any excess. I then re-pin it on and check everything. Please note that I also ran a zigzag stitch along the edges of the facing, which you can't see here. Now with the right side of the shirt facing out and the facing pinned on, I then sew these together. There's obviously a corner here while you're sewing at the neckline. If you ever want to pivot with your machine while you're sewing, you can simply keep the needle down, lift up the foot, pivot the material, put the foot back down, and then continue your sewing. This means you don't have to finish sewing and restart. You can just continue the same row of stitching. Once completed, my facing looked like this, and then I can just turn it inside out. So I take the corners first and just poke it out with my finger. This is the corner at the top of the neckline. I take an iron and press that flat. Now to sew the hem of the shirt, I'm making it quite a wide hem. The reason I'm making it a wide hem is because if I was to sew it 
closer to the bottom, it's more likely for it to fold out while you're wearing it and then make the seam visible. And we don't want that. We want it hidden. I press where I've pinned the hem and then what I actually do for the curved part of the hem is turn it over again and double it up. This will avoid fraying and give a nice neat hem. Note that I only folded once where the splits are. I then press again with an iron and can start sewing. I sew close to the fold to create a wide hem, just catching the fabric. When you get to the edge of the bottom before the split, lift the foot, turn your fabric and then put the foot back down again and you can continue your row of stitching. Once I'd finished the hem, it looked like this. You do the exact same thing to the back. Now to work on the sleeves, I fold each of them over and add pins to where the seam is going to be. I then run a straight stitch through the fabric Add a zigzag stitch to stop fraying and then I turn it inside out and it looks like this. Now I line up the sleeve with the armhole and basically the way to do this is put the sleeve inside the shirt. The sleeve should be right side facing out, the shirt should be wrong side facing out. Then add some pins to join both together. I designed this in a way so they should match up completely. Just use the reference marks if required which will help you line them up. I do a straight stitch completely over these pins. I put the pins sideways to stop this fabric moving about. It's quite tough to do this part. I can now hem the sleeves. As before, I turn over the bottom once, press with an iron, turn it over again and press with an iron. I recommend putting the shirt on first to get the correct length. I make the hem quite wide again with my stitching. You need to be careful sewing this part. I continuously check the fabric underneath isn't getting caught and then press it. Once both sleeves are on, you can check everything and if you're happy, we're going to actually add closures to the front. The closures I've chosen are called hook and eyes. I add four pairs of these and space them evenly apart. You can see I've already completed three, so I'll show you how to do the last one. Firstly, I'm adding the hook part and I've added a pin to where this should exactly go. I did this from measuring and making sure they were all spaced evenly. You want to start this off, so add a couple of stitches horizontally underneath the pin. This will stop the threads coming out and you can just trim the ends off. Now's a tricky part where you have to sort of line up where the hook should be. The way I did mine was to just sort of line up the hook with the edge. So if that's lined up properly, then you would just sew in the holes that are given. First of all, I go under the hook part and around that bar and that holds it in place. You want it to be held in place before you actually put thread through the little holes. It'd just be a lot easier for you. So I do a couple of those stitches. Now I put the thread through the holes. And when I pull the thread through, I actually take the loop and pass the thread through. Keep adding these loop stitches around the holes until they are fully intact. Then you can put a couple of stitches through the fabric and you're done. Next, you want to sew on the eye. This side you really have to line up because it has to match the hook on the other side. It's really important, otherwise you're going to end up with gapes in your shirt. Once happy with the placement, I start off the thread as before with a couple of stitches horizontally. Then I do my loop stitches by putting the thread through the hole, then through the loop. I then complete the stitching by putting a couple of stitches through the fabric. Once done, I check all of the hook and eyes. If there's any sort of gapes or anything like that, you could just take this thread back out and redo. Keep in mind that it doesn't matter if there's stitching coming towards the front of the shirt, because we're adding leather trim later, which will hide this part. So for the trim, I bought some grey leather strips. And firstly, what I'm going to do is mark out the holes where the cotton yarn will be threaded through to attach to the top. I decided to make each hole one centimetre apart and four millimetres in from the edge. 
So basically on one side I move along using two rules and mark out each point. I then turn the leather around and add marks to the other side. Please note that the holes on the other side are halfway between the ones we've just done so they don't actually align completely. Once I've added all the dots, I then take a one millimeter punch and I punch through every mark that I have made. Just to show you quickly, it should end up looking like this. You can see that the marks on the opposite side is halfway between the holes that were previously done. When you're finished, it should look like this. So now we have our first piece of leather ready and we can add the trim. You can see I've done one side already. The way these pieces of leather sit is that they kind of layer on top of each other so I worked out that this should probably be the first one that goes on. I add some pins just to hold this in place. So I thread some blue cotton through my needle and I actually don't cut it from the ball of yarn, I just leave it on there. This is because if for any reason I've not made it long enough, I can just pull the threads through and make it a bit longer. So to start this off, we're actually not going to see it because there'll be another leather going on top. So for the first stitch, I actually just add it straight next to it and pull it through. With the next stitch, however, I'm going to start the pattern. So I'm putting the needle through the fabric halfway between the first hole and the second hole and I'm pulling that through. Then I'm taking it through that second hole. And what that does is it creates a diagonal stitch, moving from the end of the leather upwards. I then make my next stitch. I go halfway between the next two holes, just outside of the leather, and then put it through the next hole. I repeat this, and I keep continuing the pattern up the way. Just always remember that the stitch outside will go between the two holes, and then it goes into the next hole upwards. I continue doing this all the way up until I get to the armhole. It should stop between the shoulder seam and the armhole seam. So once I'd finished that, I then went back to my original thread and I cut off a really long bit. I threaded that back through and continued this. So this is the original thread and I'm doing a sort of U shape. So I go through the back of the fabric and out through the other side, starting off that stitch. I then start my pattern on the second hole going halfway between the first and the second hole and then putting it through the next hole. I continue this again upwards. When finished, I remove the excess fabric so it finishes parallel to this gap in the top. Just be careful when you're cutting it as you don't want to cut into your actual shirt. So I'm doing the front now. The difference with this one is instead of putting a hole outside the leather, it actually just wraps round. Now a tricky situation is where you get to this part. This is where two bits of leather actually cross each other and sometimes you can't actually push it right through. If there's a hole already there with some thread going through it, you could actually just use the same hole and have two bits of thread going through it. When I do the other side, you'll see the other option that you've got. So once I did that, I went to the tail of the thread, cut a really long bit and then threaded that. I go through the back of the fabric and out and then continue the pattern upwards. You want to stop a couple of holes early to check the area that overlaps. So you can just flip this up and you can see that if I was to put a little mark through this middle hole, it doesn't really match any of the holes that are there already. So what I do is I just very carefully push my punch underneath, making sure to put a hole not too close to the other holes. I then continue my pattern up the way. Now when I go outside, I can also realize that I should have another hole there. So I had to go back in and make that hole. So I can now go through that hole on the outside and continue the pattern upwards. When you're finished that trim, it'll look like this. Also be aware that I've left a bit of excess up the top. The next step I'd recommend is to do the sleeve. That's because the collar should really go on top of it. So the way I would mark this is to find the seam, pull it taut with your fingers and then find the halfway point and add a pin to that point. I did this from the bottom all the way up and then I can check the pins and make sure they look straight. You really want to leave some excess trim at the top. That's because we're starting at the bottom. We want to make sure that we can accommodate for that and not run out of material. So I then move the pins onto the leather. 
and double check again it's in the middle. Once I'm ready I can then start threading. Now I didn't want to cut the bottom of the trim right at the hem of the sleeve. I thought it would look a lot better to tuck it underneath. I leave about an inch or so of the leather. So what I did was I did the pattern in the same way, except I made sure it went through the holes on the back where it turns up. If it doesn't line up properly with these holes, you can obviously punch new holes into the back. I go upwards in the same pattern. As before, I keep the thread on the ball of yarn in case I run out and so I can do the other side. I do this all the way up to the top. Note that when you get towards the top, it can get really tricky because you have to keep putting your arm inside the shirt. So now I've gone back to the tail on my original thread. I cut off a really large section and then I thread it through the needle. I then continue the pattern upwards as before. So the same thing goes when you get to this part here at the armhole. You may have to make new holes with the punch or you may have to go through some holes that are already there. Just always be sure when using the punch that you're not going to go through the shirt. So when I get to the top here, I've got some excess fabric, but I just tuck it underneath for now. So for the collar part, you want to kind of plan it so that there's holes right almost at the edge. And so you can cut through a part that's not got any holes on it, if that makes sense. Once you're happy with where it's going, make some marks through onto the other bit of leather, trim the excess, punch any holes if necessary, and then you can start your pattern. You need to do the top edge first as it keeps it aligned. Continue the pattern round like as you did the front of the top. You just go through the hole and then around into the next hole. When you get to the trim on the sleeve, you want to do the same thing again and you want to make any punch holes if required. You can also cut off the excess sleeve trim at this point. So you actually need to know where the centre of the back is. The way I did this was I counted all the holes going from one side to the other. I halved it and I found out where the middle should, should sit. And all you do at this point is change direction. So just take your thread the opposite way. So it's coming through the hole from the back and going around to the next hole. This is important as the pattern on the front is different. They both go in different directions. All I do when I get to the front, as before, I bring the thread through the fabric underneath and continue the pattern, adding any punch holes if necessary. So once the trim's added, you can then add a closure. This is quite a standard closure. You have to sew this on so it sits flat. So these aren't attached yet. I'm just trying to align them and where they should go. For each of these pieces, they have four holes each. There's two on the inside and two on the outside. So I just find out where they should go, make a mark, and then use my punch to make the holes, if required. I then use the same cotton yarn. I only do one loop and then tie a knot. For the part on the outside, you can actually manipulate it once you've done the first loop. And once you're happy, you can attach that also with the thread. So now that's the Lagertha shirt finished and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.